Hi, welcome back to the workshop for the first episode in another build series from The Shed of Dreams. Um, and this is a build that's going to take me right back to the beginning of my involvement with music and guitars, um, which ultimately led me to this situation of building guitars in my shed. And this build is going to be based around what was for me the first album that I ever bought with my own money. Um, I had been bought records previous to this one, but as soon as I had the option of what it was I wanted to buy, this is what I went and got. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's London Calling by The Clash. Um, and this is important to this build for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the music on this album really kind of cemented my belief that I wanted to become a musician um, and play the guitar in particular. And secondly, just the imagery of Paul Simonon smashing his guitar in frustration of the fans not being able to get out of their seats and dance to the music. Um, for a teenager back in 1979, that really kind of resonated with me. However, over the years, my opinion on smashing instruments has changed dramatically, as you might imagine. Um, and recently, I've kind of got this idea in my head that it would be nice to bring an instrument back into the world um, that had such a profound effect on me as a youngster. So this build is going to be recreating the guitar that Paul Simon and smashed on that night. Now those of you familiar uh, with the band will appreciate that Paul Simonon was actually the bassist and he smashed a bass guitar, not a six string guitar. Um, and this will be the first time I've built a bass. So there will be an element of a learning curve to some extent, um, but it was a precision bass. So realistically, fairly straightforward build. Now the bass actually still exists, even if it is in several pieces. Um, and as we can see from the photographs, it was kind of, fairly heavily customised and very road worn at the point it was destroyed. Now I'm not going to try and recreate that, I'm, I'm not really into kind of building relic guitars and stuff like that, nothing against them, it's just not what I do. So what I'm going to do is try and recreate what would have come out of the factory. So from my research I've been able to establish that it was a mid 1970s Olympic white precision bass with a black pit guard and a one-piece maple neck. So that effectively is what I'm going to build. There will be a couple of little minor twists along the way um, that we'll discuss when we get to them. Okay, so the first part of um, any build is generally making a set of templates. Um, ordinarily what I'd do is buy two sets of a plan um, and cut one up and use that as the basis for making the templates. This time I'm gonna try and do something slightly different. Um, not just because it's going to be cheaper to do it this way, um, that is as good a reason as any, um, but also I just find cutting a set of plans up a little bit wasteful. So what I've done this time is I've actually bought a big long roll of kind of white tracing paper. Um, and there's 50 meters on this roll, so there's enough to do multiple guitar builds. Um, <coughs> And I'm going to use this to make tracings of the elements of the plan that I need to make templates from. I'm simply going to tape it down in place. I'm using low tack tape so it doesn't rip all the plans up. I want to take it off. And with that done, I'm just going to take a, a variety of French curves, circle marking templates, and straight edges and make a tracing of the outline and all the details that are on this plan. Thank you. 
there's a tracing for the body. Um, I've actually missed most of the horn there, so I'll have to go back in and redo that, but we're pretty much done with that now. So once I've got that repaired, um, I just need to do the same thing for the rest of the templates that I need. Okay, so I've got the tracings that I've made for the templates. So what I'm going to do now is trim these down a little bit so they're closer to the actual size that I need. Um, so I'm not wasting timber when I make the templates. With that done, I will then spray mount them onto this piece of half inch MDF, which will be what I make the actual templates out of. In terms of materials for this build, um, it's going to be fairly straightforward. Unusually for me, I've bought a pre-prepared body blank um, just because that made things easier. It's very difficult to get a hold of timber at the moment. We're still in lockdown, um, so it's easier just to order this off the internet. And what it is, is a big piece of white ash. Um, it's heavy. However, I do know that the base we're trying to replicate was chosen specifically because it was a heavy guitar and Paul Simonon thought that heavier guitars had a, a kind of deeper, meatier tone to them. So that will be true to the original. It's a one piece maple neck. So I have a big lump of maple that we can make that from. Um, this is actually the same board that I made the top of the Thin Line Telecaster from. If you haven't seen that build series, I'll put a link up there for it. Um, it's not plain maple. There is a little bit of figure in this wood. So I think that's gonna make a nice neck. Um, because it's a one piece neck, it will have a skunk stripe. So I've got a board of um, walnut there which I can rip a skunk stripe off um, and black pit guard material for the pit guard. In terms of the hardware um, it's fairly straightforward there's not a, not a huge amount. Um, I've got a vintage style base bridge this is a Wilkinson one um, it's got brass saddles so that should be quite nice um, just the, the standard elephant here base tuners. A couple of CTS pots, orange drop cap, a couple of just standard knurled control knobs, pretty similar to what you'd see on a Telecaster. Um, I've gone with the Tone Rider um, precision base, precision plus pickup. Um, I don't really know what this particular pickup is going to be like but I've used a lot of tone riders in the past and they've always been really really good so looking forward to hearing that. Um, some Olympic white paint that I got from Northwest Guitars so this is nitrocellulose. Um, anyone who's watched my builds before will know that I'm a big fan of nitro paint and some clear lacquer for the neck. Um, I'll probably kind of tint that a little bit to put a bit of age on the neck. I'm not a fan of kind of brand new bright white maple on a neck. And that's pretty much it. Um, oh, string tree. There's not a lot to these. Um, I've got a couple of bits on the way. Um, I still need a neck plate and some screws and a few other bits and pieces. Um, but that's pretty much what's going into the build. Okay, so I've left these to dry overnight. Um, They've gone on really nicely. There's a, a couple of little wrinkles here and there, but that's not going to affect the performance of what I need them to do. Um, so the next step is to kind of rough these out with a jigsaw into kind of manageable pieces um, and get them onto the bandsaw. 
What I'm also going to do is, this is a factory edge on this piece of MDF, so I know this is very straight. Um, so I'm going to cut a section off there as well, and I'm going to use that as a straight edge for when I'm routing the edges of the neck template. Hopefully that will give me a really straight edge there. Okay, so having cut those down on the bandsaw um, and kind of getting them as close as I can on the disc sander, um, I'm now going to move to the oscillating sander um, to get as much as I can on here before finally going with the router and cleaning up all the straight bits. Okay, so I've got these templates mostly shaped now. Um, that's the body one. Just got a few little bits to do. Um, the main thing I've got to achieve is on the neck, there's these two long straight edges, which I haven't done yet. Um, and to do that, I'm gonna use this straight edge from the MDF that we took off the sheet um, at the beginning. So this is the factory straight edge, so it is nice and straight. Okay, so what I need to do is attach this straight edge to the template along the line that we drew. And I'm going to do that in the time-honored fashion of masking tape and super glue. Um, now the problem I might have is this paper that I've used is kind of quite slick in places. Um, so I'm not quite sure how well the masking tape is gonna to stick to this. I've done a little test sample and it seemed to be okay. Um, time will tell. Oh, seems to have got it. Okay, so I've just set that up on some um, bench cookies and um, clamped it down to the bench. And I'm just going to use my small trimmer to take this excess off. Okay, so that's that's cleaned that up lovely. The problem we've got is it has taken some of the paper off um, the template, which is not ideal. However, most of it remains, so I'll still be able to set up for the other straight edge. Um, luckily, the headstock has remained untouched, and that's where most of the stuff that I need to be on um, is still there, so that's happy days. Um, all it means is I'll just have to kind of remark where I'd set my nut line um, and put a new center line on, but that, that's not too big a deal. Okay, on to the next half.
Okay, so that's come out quite nice actually, really pleased with that. Um, still a little bit of tidying up to do, so I'll, I'll just sand that up with a, a block and some rough sandpaper, just to make sure that that is nice and straight, take out any little marks that are in there, just so they're not transferred onto the neck um, when we get to that stage. Okay, so that's the bulk of the work done on the templates. Um, I've been around them with a couple of sanding blocks, one that's obviously straight and one that's curved, um, just to make sure that all these edges kind of flow really smoothly and there's no kind of lumps or bumps anywhere in them. Um, so that's all good. The last thing I need to do on these for the time being is on the body template, I need to just cut out for the pickup and the controlled cavity routes. So the first step in that is to drill some holes through with the force and the bits, um, and then come in with the jigsaw again, cut as close to the line as I can, and then clean it up manually with files and rasps, etc. Okay, so to the drill press. Okay, so I've roughed out um, the control route. Um, what I'm going to do now is I've prepared some little blocks of MDF that I know have got a straight edge and I've sanded a perfectly square corner onto them and marked that corner. Then I'm super gluing and masking taping them down onto the perimeter of these routes. Um, I'm probably going to only be able to do kind of two sides at a time, um, so I'm going to have to work my way around. Um, but that's what I'm going to do for the square sections. Um, for these curved sections, I'll just kind of sand them out and clean them up that way. Okay, and there's the pickup route done and the control cavities. Uh, just a little bit of cleaning up to do. Um, and then we can call this template at least done. Okay, so that's the templates more or less done. Um, there's a few little bits, but generally I'm really happy with them. They're where we need to be at this point. Um, I've got a few holes to drill in, etc., cetera, um, just to finish them off. So I'm gonna crack on with that now so that when we come back next time, we'll be ready to actually start the proper build. Okay, so that's the templates done and I'm very happy with them. Um, I've probably spent two days getting these to the stage that are at now. Um, and that might seem like quite a lot of time, but it's time really, really well spent and it will pay me dividends as I go through the build and save me no end of time. A good set of templates are the foundation to this type of guitar building and should, if you look after them, last for many, many builds. Now you probably noticed that I was wearing a mask through pretty much the whole of that process and that I spent quite a lot of time hoovering the dust up as I went along. MDF's a brilliant material, it's very stable, it's got a multitude of uses, but the dust from it is quite nasty. So you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself from that, you know, and that you're always staying safe in the workshop. But anyway, we've got that done. We've got a really nice set of templates and I'm going to be back very, very soon with the next episode where we'll take that big block of wood and start turning it into a bass guitar body. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Bye bye.